Easy people, hope everyone's doing okay. Today's video, we are going for a wander upon the city of Cork. We're gonna stay in the centre, as there are many interesting points for us to take a look at. And yeah, we'll see what we discover. So let's get wandering into the centre. This is the point closest to my hostel, St. Patrick's Church. And look at that spire, absolute beauty. And you can see this window here at the front with the oscillation, still got the geometric formations inside there. You'll notice how many of these old world church buildings, cathedrals, they're on mounds. And that is because I suspect that many of these have lower levels. We already have proof of this in many of the old world cathedrals, churches around the world. But I suspect that if not all of them have lower levels that we're perhaps not aware of. The name of that church. Also the same with the windows at the side and even on the tower. You can see the oscillation points and we also have another big window with exactly the same thing at the side of the one of the entrances. There are a few entrances to this church. Also another building just to the side there. You can notice a red brick chimney stack in the distance there just to the left of the church and also at the front we have another old world red brick building with a small tower spire you can see the building we were just looking at and we've got a date on this building at the side 1863 saint patrick's catholic church 1832 you can see at the top of these pillars here this is actually a depiction of the tororal field electromagnetic energy flowing this is the depiction of such a thing. You also notice it on the tower block in the middle there, with the tororal field on the pillars that are coming down. And just to the side of the church, you can see the repurposed doorways with the lower levels. As we walk to our next destination, I just want to show you some of these buildings that are in front of me right here. Look at this. Beautiful old world red brick. And the same over there with a small spire. You can see where antennas would be placed. And just behind through there is a river running at the back of this building. As we walk away from those red brick buildings, I'll speak about the importance of water. Now, if you imagine a huge antenna being on the spire on some of the domes, then when this is vibrating and the dome is resonating the vibration and that is going through the structure, it would reverberate its way down into the foundations where water has been proven to exist in many of these old world structures. Now, the importance of that or what role it plays, again, this is all open to interpretation, how you perceive it, but there is such a thing as magnetic water, healing waters, the living waters as they call it. So perhaps this is a certain, or this, perhaps this is a, a part of this whole process of electromagnetism. We're just going to walk in the opposite direction, but I just want to show you, as you can see, the dome there with a the spire and another dome in the distance, and that is where the river was we were just looking at. But we're going to walk up this way. We've got two points of interest to check out. And whilst we're doing that, I'll touch on a little bit of the history of Cork, that these old world cities weren't built by the inhabitants, such as the Irish people, the Gaelic people. Cork has its start, or its main sort of jump up from the Vikings, or so they say. It was set up as a trade town that then the colonial British came here and developed things further. This is a similar story that we find all over the world. You have these prominent key players, um, Portugal, Netherlands, uh, France, the UK, and a few others, um, the principalities almost. And they have taken the credit for the old world in pretty much all of the countries. They colonise the world. But I don't subscribe to that. I think that is just an agreed version of history, an agreed version of events. I see history as the people from this country built this city. So it would have been the Irish people, the Gaelic people that built these magnificent structures. And the reason that they're similar 
all over the world is because they are built with the purpose there is a purpose to these old world buildings they're not just built for decoration like we're told um, in an energetical sense for energy for electromagnetism for vibrations for healing for sound frequency harmonics there is an incredible amount of evidence that is coming to light and has been coming to light for a long time that shows the importance of sound of vibration um, and really when you get down to the quantum field of things the scientific uh, analysis of things you really are dealing with energy as everything all is energy all is sound all is vibration as the famous saying goes but anyway we'll walk over to our next point of interest because there are many many good points of interest in the city center of Cork. you can see the church of saint anne there and i just want to speak a little bit about the tower and the resonator whilst we're here so you can see the the bald resonator sitting on top of the dome there obviously the weathercock is more of a Med, uh, modern concept the old world antenna would have been on there and you can see how it would reverberate all the way down the tower and what are these towers they are bell towers which again is all about vibration and sound so the frequencies that would be produced by such a structure would really be harmonic to say the least st anne's church was built in 1722 and is one of only two city churches from that period still in use as a place of worship Hello, good boy. <laughs> hello, hello, oh, hello, hello, good boy. <laughs> so we're just at the side of St Anne's there, and wow, how interesting! Look at that. You can already see the bricked-up lower levels. That is another common theme that we find with these old world structures. They've just been bricked over, completely lost, and. No one is allowed to go down into these lower levels. You can make out the gradient there as well, again, on top of a mound. As I was saying earlier, many of these old world structures, it's almost as if they've just pushed the mud up, up to the side of the structure to make it as a to hill. And that is why you get these buried side windows. Looking at these front steps, is it possible that that it's just a window, much like the other one, much like the ones above it. And these steps have been repurposed to bring it up because of the lower levels. We've already seen the basement windows at the side there that have been bricked over. As I said, that is a reoccurring theme with these old world structures. Perfect timing. Short distance from where we were and we have the Cathedral of St Mary and St Anne. The present cathedral was dedicated in 1808. Again, you notice the oscillation points within each window. This has been repurposed. We do find in some, only a few now, where they've been left and the level of detail is through the entire window. Cork, like all of the old world cities, has gone through many, many changes, either through great fires, through conflicts, or through deliberate demolition. What they do, or what the agreed version is, is old world structures become too expensive to maintain, too expensive to restore. So it is better to just knock them down and start again. That is how they get away with deliberately destroying much of the old world architecture. Wow, guys, we've got an excellent example right in front of us here. This is St. Finbar's Cathedral. And look at this. That is a great example of the oscillation that I was speaking about earlier, how much of the detail was being lost. But this one seems to have a lot more intact. Look at this as well. We can see lower level entrances right here. I'll take you up to the main entrance in a minute, which is up at that level, but good to see. We've got some excellent information here, guys. I'll poke it through and read it for you. 
The magnificent Church of Ireland, St. Finbar's Cathedral, is believed to occupy part of the site of the monastery founded by the patron saint of Cork, St. Finbar, in the 7th century, which included a round tower that stood here until the late 17th century. The present cathedral was built in the 19th century, however, its predecessors dated from the 12th to the 18th centuries. You can pause that and have a read of it further, but there we go. Some amazing information right there, and look at the front of this structure. This is just gorgeous. Beautiful building. It's got all the hallmarks of energy building. And again, we call these things places of healing. But perhaps the old world interpretation of healing was more to do with energy, sound, vibration and frequency. Look at these towers and spires. We've got the oscillation centers. We've got so much detail. Now explaining this oscillation center in the middle here, it has the symbols of the evangelists, which is just the pictures, A, B, C, and D, A, B, C, and D rather. But it doesn't explain what this actually is. What is that magnificent centerpiece that clearly has a design, a purpose, also interesting, we have gargoyles representing virtue overcoming vice, which is just on the corners here, which we'll take a look at. There you can see, and these gargoyles have open mouths. Now we know from other sites across this realm that these gargoyles can potentially spit out water. Now, it has been hypothesized before that that is dirty water, bad water that has been used perhaps in some sense, in an energetical sense, because as we've touched on, these structures could easily have the lower foundations with the living waters. Places of healing, water and electromagnetism really, really do go hand in hand with one another. So it's interesting to see these gargoyles at the side with the open mouths. You notice the stained glass within the middle of that centerpiece right there. It's incredibly detailed but I do believe the stained glass is added at a much later date and isn't what the true purpose of a design such as that. That has been designed for a purpose, not to have glass filled in its empty spaces. Just piercing through there, guys, you can see the old world red brick in those archways. And this is something I've touched on before. This out of stonework that we see. It's really just rendering, really. It's just out of stone. It isn't what the actual structure is made of. And the importance of this red brick, this old world red brick that we find in these magnificent cities, is it contains magnetite, which is the most magnetic mineral known in this earthly realm. those huge archways there they've obviously been filled with glass but you can see how magnets are all around this structure everywhere you look even under the centerpiece of oscillation there you have the magnetized windows magnetized windows these buildings have bells but they also have the organ which is a mighty powerful instrument indeed and it is said from the old world this time when they were focused on healing being an optimum living that the sounds that would have been produced the vibrations and the frequencies that would be produced in these structures with the organ would have the power to heal a person's organs again we see these unnatural mounds it doesn't feel like this is the original level even just looking at that from there we already know there's a side door some 10 12 feet down but i suspect they go much lower i've suspected it for a long time that these could potentially go down three four levels as we are not dealing with the original street level when these buildings were constructed that building just to the side as well and just literally a stone's throw from this magnificent structure you can see there just in the distance a fortification that is a fortified wall, a star fort. There are many star forts in Ireland and actually around five, I believe, within close proximity of the city of Cork. So we'll go over and take a look at this one. Just at the edge of the Elizabeth Fort. 
And the unfortunate thing with these is you can't really appreciate how good they are unless you have aerial shots. So I'm just gonna show you the walls here so you can get an idea of how big they are, how vast. Interesting information just to the side here. The area around Barrack Street is one of the oldest occupied parts of Cork City. Elizabeth Fort was completed around 1626, replacing an earlier fort that had been built in 1601. So again, even in the timeline that they give us, we know that these old world cities are incredibly ancient and they were master masons because the level of engineering needed to complete such structures is not simple. It's not a simple process. Again, you cannot appreciate the level of detail just by looking at the side. These are star forts, bastion forts, geometric formations. Beautiful shot of the cathedral spire there in the distance. They tell us that the reason for being a geometric formation is it is the best line of defense. It makes it very hard to penetrate, which is all well and good, but it doesn't explain how they got it to the exact precision. How do you make a geometric formation with precise, the precise level of measurements, unless you have some form of technology? Look at this building right here, guys. This is a school. This is a school. It's like a Victorian one or one that you'd associate with that, but definitely an old world building. Well guys, I think this is a good place to wrap this video up. Outside the city hall, you can see copper dome there with an antenna on. All of the old world antique protect that you'd expect to see. And yeah, this is part one for this video in Cork because there is quite a lot to see. I don't want to cram it all into one video. Give you a quick glimpse of the river so you can see exactly where I am. Much of the old world buildings intertwine now with modern buildings. This is what we find in many of the old world cities now. But anyway, we'll wrap this up with the Copper Dome and I will see you all on part two. Take care.